Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are looking at the Le Chatelier's principle and we'll try to simplify it as much as possible so that you understand the basics for the exam. The, the definition to begin with, if we see here, we say Le Chatelier's principle states that if a system is at equilibrium and it experiences a, a change in either concentration, temperature, or pressure, then the equilibrium will shift in order to minimize that change and a new equilibrium will be established. So it's important to real, uh, firstly identify what is the change that, were, that we are experiencing and how Le Chatelier's principle counters this change in the equilibrium. <clears throat> so first we have to look at the stress. The stress will either be concentration, temperature or pressure then we must look at Le Chatelier's principle and say that it will minimize this change in concentration, temperature and pressure and then we'll decide whether the forward or reverse reaction is favored and then what is the result. So let's look at each of these factors individually. So if you look at concentration, the rule is if the concentration of any of the reactants increases, the equilibrium will shift to the product side. So, if you look at this example, we've got nitrogen and hydrogen making ammonia. If the concentration of nitrogen or hydrogen increases, then the system will move to the product side. It will move to get rid of this increase. So, the nitrogen and hydrogen will decrease, and the ammonia will increase. So, in this case, the NH3 will increase, and the <coughs> N2 and H2 will decrease. Just to take out the arrows, make it a little easy for us. Right, and going further, if the concentration of the products increase, if we make, if we have too much of NH3, then the system will move in the direction to get rid of the extra NH3. So in this case, the NH3 will decrease. We'll just look at the NH3, but obviously you have to look at the question and see what they are asking. So basically, uh, the rule is, if you have too much of something, go to the other side. So you got too much of something, go to the other side. In your mind, this is how you can remember it. Or you, the, the, the opposite is, if you have too little of something, then you come to the, you stay at the same side. So let me explain this now. If you have two little NH3, for example, in this case, you have two little NH3, then the system must move in the direction to make more NH3. So the forward reaction will be favored so that we can make more NH3. So if you have two little H2, then the system must move in such a way to make the extra H2. Okay, that is concentration. <clears throat> if you look at temperature, the rule is that increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction and a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction. So we have to remember the rule. Now how do we know which reaction is endothermic and which reaction is exothermic? So if you look at this equation here, we have to look at this delta H value. And we see that the delta H value is negative or if your delta H is less than zero, then that will refer that the fourth reaction in this case is exothermic. And that will mean that the reverse case is endothermic. So, if in, this di in this diagram, an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. So, if we have all, this all these chemicals in the reaction vessel and we increase the temperature, then the endothermic reaction will be favored. So, the reverse reaction will be favored. So, N2 will increase, H2 will increase. And we said we're just focusing on the NH3 in this example, so the NH3 will decrease. If you look at the next case, if we have to decrease the temperature, then we favor the exothermic reaction. And if we take this example, if we decrease this whole reaction, then the exothermic reaction is favored. The exothermic reaction is a forward reaction. So in this case, if we wanted to know what happens to the NH3, the NH3 will increase. The rule regarding pressure is that pressure only applies to gases. So we have to first make sure that everything 
is in the gaseous phase, then pressure will apply. So the rule is <coughs> an increase in pressure favors the reaction that has less moles or less molecules and a decrease in pressure favors the reaction that has more moles or more molecules. So if you look here on the left hand side, we see that we've got one nitrogen and three hydrogen. So we have four moles on the left on the reactant side and on this side we have two moles. So because we are <coughs> focusing on what happens to the NH3 alone, if you increase the pressure, then we will go to the side with less moles. So the left hand side has got four moles, the right hand side has got two moles. So the side with more mole, uh, less moles will be favored. So NH3 will be favored. So in this case, if we have to increase the pressure, the concentration of NH3 will increase. Then I must the deltas right through here, but we're not doing there now. If you decrease the pressure, then you favor the reaction with more moles. So in this case, on the left hand side, you've got four moles. On the right hand side, you've got two moles. So if you decrease the pressure, you will favor the side with more moles. So that means you will favor the side with the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So nitrogen will increase, hydrogen will increase, and MH3 will decrease. So this is the three rules that we have to know. And to summarize it for us very nicely, we see here that we must know that if the concentration of any of the reactants increases, the equilibrium shifts to the product side. If the concentration of any of the products increases, the equilibrium shifts to the reactant side. And it's also vice versa, meaning that if the, con uh, the concentration of any of the products decrease, then the equilibrium will shift to the product side. We have to know it, you have to know that as well. That means if you have too little NH3, as I mentioned earlier, if you have too little NH3, then the, shift, uh, the system must move to make more NH3. So if the concentration of the product, the NH3 decreases, then the equilibrium must shift to the product side to make more NH3. So you must remember that. Now, let me just look at this table again to, to look at our basics. So if the concentration of any of the reactants increases, the equilibrium shifts to the product side. If the concentration of any of the products increases, the reactant shifts to the reactant side. Alternatively, an increase in temperature favors an endothermic reaction. And a decrease in temperature will always favor the exothermic reaction. And when we look at pressure, an increase in pressure favors the reaction that has less moles, and a decrease in pressure favors the reaction that has more moles. So this table here is extremely important, and you have to learn it well so that you will understand how the Shetley's principle works. And this will show you what is the effect or the result of the whole uh, change that has come onto the system. Now, when you answer a question related to Le Chatelier's principle, this is important. That firstly, we must identify the stress. We must say the stress is an increase in temperature or a decrease in concentration or whatever the case may be. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the system must minimize this stress, the disturbance. And then we must look at the table. We must learn the table. And from the table, we will decide what is the effect, meaning that which, is the, which reaction is favored, the forward reaction is favored or the reverse reaction is favored, and then we will know the result, whether the concentration of the reactants increases or the products decreases of whatever the case may be. So this is a simple explanation of how the Shetley's principle works. Now, looking at a simple uh, exam question that you can get, the reaction below represents the catalyzed steps in the contact process. So we have SO2 plus O2 gives you SO3. The reaction takes place in a closed container and reaches equilibrium at 427 degrees Celsius. How will a higher temperature affect each of the following? Right, only increase, decrease, or remain the same. So if you look at this question, we're saying that how will a higher temperature affect each of the reactants. Now, if we go to our temperature uh, table, the rule is an increase in temperature. So we are looking at this. So we know that an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. So 
we have to decide where is the endothermic reaction. And if you look here, it says delta H is less than zero, so we know that the reaction going from left to right is exothermic. So which means the reaction from going from right to left, the one that's going this way, is endothermic. Now that we know that, we know that an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction. The rate of production of SO3. Now here what we have to know is that the rate of production, I haven't explained this earlier, is affected by the temperature, meaning that when the particles collide, and um, what happens is that if you increase the temperature, they collide more often, and if they collide more often, they are more effective collisions. So because they are more effective collisions, the rate will increase. And then, but at the same time, although the rate will increase, it means that the rate of the formation of SO3 and the rate of the formation of SO2 and O2 will increase. Both the forward and the reverse reaction will increase because of the higher temperature. But in the second case, the yield of SO3, what's going to happen to the amount of SO3 that we have finally after all equilibrium is reached? We know that the higher temperature favors the uh, endothermic reaction. The reverse reaction is endothermic, so the SO2 and the O2 will increase. Therefore, the SO3, in our case, will the SO3 will decrease. That's important. The SO3 will decrease. Let's just put this nicely. SO3 will decrease because the reverse reaction will be endothermic. So this is a summary related to the Shetley's principle. There was one or two things like 7.4.1 that I didn't discuss. But this is an explanation related to the, the, uh, the equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle that you could get in the exam. Thanks for your time. Thank you for listening.